This is 2.4 carbohydrates and lipids, still looking at Unit 2 Biochemistry, and we're going to be looking at the four classes of macromolecules. This video, carbohydrates and lipids. Let's go. Carbohydrates are sugars. These are like, or like starches. You know, we think of like bread and bananas and potatoes and pretzels and honey and dried fruit. I'm just naming all the stuff in this picture. It's funny. So yeah, carbs, we're familiar with them. And so for each one of these macromolecule classes, uh, be able to tell me what they are, like generally, like sugars, that's a good kind of thing. Uh, two of them are not going to be really helpful, but these two, the next two are. And then you're going to be able to tell me the monomers and the polymers of each one too. So the, the monomer of carbohydrates are called monosaccharides. Mono, one, saccharide, sugar. So it's literally one sugar. Glucose is an example of monosaccharide. The polymer is called a, wait for it, polysaccharide. And so sucrose, really simple, polysaccharide, there's only two pieces, whereas like uh, starch or something like that, it's going to be really big and can have hundreds of different glucose molecules. And so it can be really big or really small, but more, two or more is a polymer. And so monosaccharide, polysaccharide are the monomer and polymer for these things. What's the primary function of carbohydrates? Their primary function is that they are the primary source of energy for all living things, meaning that when living things are searching for industry or in energy, carbs are going to be the way they turn, typically. Uh, the body is able to process carbs quickly and efficiently, and, um, and living organisms will, will go out of their way to get carbs before fat or protein not to say those things don't have energy in them they do but a carb it represents readily available source of energy but carbs have other functions we're going to look at some of those so um one of those is just simple energy storage or carb storage again carbs are quick energy and organisms will store that quick energy in order to use it later plants store that energy in a form called starch and a starch is a polysaccharide that's lots of glucose molecules Animals store that in glycogen. We store glycogen in our livers. We store glycogen in our muscles. When we need uh, a little more carbs, then we'll, we'll use those um, stores in order to get that quick energy. Cellulose is another type of carbohydrate, and it is a structural carb, meaning that it is used to build things. And so you can see the different structural, the way it's set up there. It's just, it literally stacks. And so plants will use cellulose in order to make stems and leaves and other things. This plants uh, use to basically make their cell walls and uh, it makes it hard to digest. And so uh, like our bodies really can't even do it. Um, whereas animals have other enzymes that allow them to do that. And then there's chitin over there on the right. Chitin uh, is one of the components of exoskeletons for arthropods and uh, fungus cell walls as well. And um, this is also a structural carb. And so its function is to build things rather than to serve as energy. Next, lipids. Lipids are things like fats, oils, waxes, and steroids. Steroids are a lipid as well. We'll talk about them. Lipids are hydrophobic. What does that mean? They are extremely nonpolar. And so um, they're very nonpolar in their nonpolar in their chemical makeup, sorry, and uh, they do not like water. Water is polar. Obviously, we talked about that. And so um, this is things like, you know, this is why water and oil don't mix is because lipids are very nonpolar and or hydrophobic is another word that you can use for that. It's the word that's just on your screen or and hydrophilic is the word that is used for water loving. So we'll use those two words, but polar and nonpolar also work for that as well. Uh, the monomer for lipids are called fatty acids, and the fatty acid are those individual chains that you see there in the um, in the in the black letters, and then the glycerol is that uh, you can see over there on the left side the blue letters. The glycerol is essentially kind of the way I like to think about it is like a, a closet rod, and the fatty acids are like clothes, and you hang the fatty acids on the glycerol closet rod. And so glycerol is a way that it binds all those fatty acids together. And a lot of times um, fatty acids are found in groups of three. And so we, would, we will say that the polymer for lipids is called a triglyceride, which is three fatty acid chains. 
and a glycerol molecule. What are the function of lipids? Well, the function of lipids is to store energy. Like this big bear here, he has stored energy for a long winter, and he's going to go to sleep while there's no food because he has all the food inside of him. And he is going to uh, be able to store that energy when he comes back out in the spring. He's not going to look as robust because he has used all that stored energy in order to keep his body going. So a couple different kinds of fats. We're going to look at saturated versus unsaturated fats. Um, these are words that you're probably familiar with. Uh, the reason it's called saturated fat is because it is completely full of hydrogen or it has been saturated with hydrogen. And so it has this nice straight appearance there. You see that saturated fats are solid at room temperature. And so uh, you can kind of imagine stacking these things on top of each other. They, they fit nicely, which is how solids work as well. So animal fats are typically saturated, but not always. There are some exceptions to that. And then unsaturated fats, uh, you can see there, they're not completely saturated because of those carbon double bonds. It causes them to bend, and so they don't stack. And so they are liquids at room temperature. Typically plant fats are unsaturated fats, but again, not always. There are exceptions to that. Now what would happen if you decided to cram some hydrogen into that fat, into that unsaturated fat, to make it artificially saturated? Well, this is what we call hydrogenated fat. Cool Whip is an example of hydrogenated fat. Cool Whip is not dairy. Notice it says whipped topping. It's not dairy. It's hydrogenated oil. It's oil that has been artificially crammed full of hydrogen. Yummy hydrogen. And the last type of lipid we're going to look at are called phospholipids. Notice that word phospho there. It has to do with the phosphate that's on that top of that. Phosphates are negative, and so they have a charge. And so they are polar, or they're hydrophilic. They love water. The two hydrophobic tails of the phospholipid do not. And so a phospholipid is interesting in that it has a hydrophilic portion and a hydrophobic portion. And so part of it likes water, part of it doesn't. These make great molecules for cell membranes because they form a barrier that doesn't allow everything in and also keeps things inside and so our cell membranes are primarily composed of phospholipids. And I just realized that I don't have a picture for steroids. And so we're going to go all the way back here to the beginning. And you can see there in the upper right-hand corner, that's two pictures of steroids there. And a steroid is a, is a specialized lipid. Notice it looks different than anything else we've looked at. They always have that same, that kind of four-ring structure. And so what a steroid is, is it's basically a communicator uh, and if it's a molecule that causes some sort of effect in your body and they're distributed throughout the body using the bloodstream and the in the you know like hormones system and they are typically communicators they they're released by other parts of the body in order to do some sort of thing uh, there's some like a, a common steroid is also called cholesterol that is found inside cell membranes and it gives cell membranes flexibility and, uh, and especially in colder areas, some organisms will have cholesterol in their cell membranes in order to keep them from freezing. And so steroids, even though they look different than the other lipids, they are definitely a lipid in all ways. They're nonpolar, except for this one. Does, they don't store energy. Rather, they are communication molecules.